Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Fire Rises mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. Uh, but we love the United States of America and we're playing as a good old American nation today and we've got the American Century. Um, America, through the past hundred years, has been considered the world's premier power. With the best economy the world has ever seen, a huge diverse land mass with a multitude of resources and people and has become the world's premier democratic nation. The last hundred years have provided the United States free range to spread its ideas with the enemies collapsing in her might. However, the demons of America's past have come to haunt her, ringing her through her head ever louder as the days draw on. The many voices cry for reparations for black Americans who were once in chains throughout the Deep South, while liberation coming to them through the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 during the American Civil War, and later in 1865, the 13th Amendment was ratified abolishing slavery. However, not all was right, for they were theoretically free, but the Southerners kept them as slaves in all but name. This finally ended with the Civil Rights Act in 1964. However, the effect of slavery still felt in racial relations have declined dramatically over the past few decades. Then in constant bouts over whether or not America's founding on the suffering of others or the liberty of an individual, e pluribus and unum. That seems a bit weird to bring up. I mean, that's important and all, but like, that seems a bit odd, especially with the past 100 years. Is that the most important thing that's gone on? Well, that's just me. The current situation. Across the world and across the earth, across the creative humanity, a new decade has arisen. New Year's fireworks are still going off across the globe, and many are still creating their New Year's, new year's resolutions. In fact, the U.S. It's not doing anything much different. With every decade, it is tradition for a nation to overview the situations we face, whether it be economically, globally, or politically. Economically, the nation has enjoyed relative stability over the past few years. Inflation and prices have been kept at a manageable level, and development has continued as expected across the country. However, much of this economic stability hinges on one crucial factor, oil. The growing dependence on what has become the new goal of the world is vital to maintaining your nation's balance. Should our primary supply cut off its supply, the U.S. could quickly find itself in a severe crisis. On the other international front, the U.S. has faced a similar climate of tension in recent years. Disputes and incidents do arise, but they're generally handled through diplomatic channels or strategic interventions, ensuring that these issues remain contained and not spiral out of control. Despite these challenges, the U.S.'s sphere of influence remains largely stable. However, constant overwatch is needed in order to maintain a reach. Of the three set main sets of problems the U.S. faces every decade, is now the political system of grandeur that inhabits the machinations of our nation. That is our biggest issue. With the presidential race in full swing and election night rapidly approaching, political tension across the country has reached an unnerving level. Political anger is on the rise, and the polarization among citizens has become increasingly alarming. Or once simple differences in opinion have now led to some individuals to adopt extreme stances, with many even arming them themselves over political disagreements. While the challenges the U.S. faces in this new, new decade may appear straightforward at first glance, it's ultimately the outcome of the upcoming election that will decide the course of the nation. The stakes have never been higher, and the decisions made on election night will shape the future for the land of the free for years to come. Cheers to a new decade, a new era for America, whether it be bright or dim. So I'm going to be honest here, we're going to go with Joe Biden in this campaign, as you can tell from the thumbnail. Um, I will play as Donald Trump eventually, but we're playing as Donald Trump now, but like we'll go down his route eventually. Uh, so we're going to go with side against Trump eventually, but State of the Union. Donald Trump is near the end of his controversial first term. The 45th president of the U.S. presides over a crumbling nation. While outwardly the economy is strong and prosperous, many fears it's not to last. America stands at a crossroads once again. The State of the Union address will not be an ordinary one. And we're going to side against Trump for now. Politically, I, it doesn't matter, really. But, I, like I said, we're going to go with the Democrats for now, because at least one person, if not multiple people, have wanted me to go with the Union of America route for the Civil War. I promise you, at the time of this recording, we will definitely go with Trump at some point. Trump has proved to be an enormous failure. If the U.S. is to survive the impending storm, we'll do everything possible to get this narcissistic clown out of office. So, side with Biden for a return to normalcy. So, I guess for this campaign, we'll be riding with Biden. The ruling party popularity modifier will be mapped to the Social Liberal Party. Approval rating begins to go low uh, the next election. Okay, so, um, we got the State of the Union, uh, Faction, we're NATO, we're the leaders of NATO, for now. Uh, we got Mike Pence here, uh, Judas Priest, uh, Judas Priest, uh, Mike Pompeo, Steve Mnuchin, David Bernhard, John Rockefeller. I can't even imagine this was four years ago already, holy cow. Anyways, we got political division. A house divided cannot stand, said Abraham Lincoln in 1858, the election before the first American Civil War. Those faithful words have been echoed through the halls of the DNC during the primary in 2019, and now I'm going to sign for the upcoming election. Electoral gridlock has gripped Congress, as bickering between the politicians has stopped many, any meaningful legislation from passing. Out on the streets of Portland, the dinner table in Florida, political tensions about all subjects, ranging from culture to economics, threaten to tear this country apart. Yes, it does. And the Trump economy, look at that. The average American has grown used to turning on the TV and seeing a new report about the stock market soaring under the Trump presidency. Unemployment has remained low and poverty rates have drastically decreased. While many Americans have reaped the rewards of the thriving market, others have criticized it for being unfair, citing the differences between the millions of Americans who can barely afford health care while the ultra-rich relax on the private yachts. Regardless of political leaning, it is nearly unanimously agreed upon that the economy will play a pivotal role in the upcoming election. Second Amendment rally in Richmond? As the Virginia State Senate votes on new firearm regulations, 
thousands of citizens across Virginia and neighboring states mass of the Richmond Town Hall in support for the Second Amendment. Good to see a few fellow patriots. Hopefully nobody's shot. This is probably the Democrat route we want. Uh, America first. The hallmark catchphrase capturing the essence of the Trump foreign policy, American represents a fundamental shift from the days of the 2000s era globalism. With the complaints about the U.S. being forced to carry the defense burden of our European allies and jobs fleeing overseas to Southeast Asia, Americans have roared for the return of jobs and political focus on domestic issues and political establishment. The American political system has always been designed to support two parties and two parties only. Its first pass the post voting system is to ensure that no third party could legitimately challenge these two incumbent parties reigning in the halls of Washington. While many criticize the system as anti democratic for suppressing minority voices, some even going so far to call it a duopoly, its supporters have praised it for its stability, ensuring that the American system does not allow extremism within its systems. This, and more and more Americans seem to be growing tired of the old politicians of Washington and have been drifting towards populist third parties. Don't worry, they're all one mega uniparty in the end. State of the Union. The State of the Union this year was quite an interesting one. As usual, President Trump positively touted his achievements since the last State of the Union speech and invited many people who he considered to have been affected positively by his policies, most notably Juan Guaido, the interim president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Venezuela. The president also attempted to calm down fears towards the rising COVID-19 virus in China by announcing talks to Xi Jinping about containing the virus. Towards the end of the speech, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi Throw up a speech right behind him, which saw the ire of the Republicans and received lukewarm reception from the Democrats. The ire of the speech was mostly received well and shows our people that America is on the up and up. I apologize for this, but I think it's screen day. Oh, no, it's, oh, God, I can't. We can't have that or I'll get copyright struck. My bad. Sorry, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, if I get. I can't afford to get copyright struck anymore. I'm sorry. Or. Especially struck. I already got two strikes on my channel, but whatever. Plus, he didn't even read it. The play is Trump. More lies from Trump. We'll go with this side. Because at this point, we're all used to it. Oh. Where have we seen the media, at least? Engage the media. What does this do? Fund the media. High approval rating. Towards high approval. Engage the media. Prolong impeachment. The media is a massive influence in American society. By using all the combined power, we can ensure that the guy in the White House doesn't get another term. Or expand the CDC. COVID-19 poses a threat to the very fabric of our society. The Centers for Disease Control must be expanded if we are to fight this off. By ensuring they receive expanded powers and funding, we can bring an end to the menace hanging over our nation. A little more debt. You know what? We're going to go with that one first. Let's see. So we got some low taxes. We got near zero interest rates, high welfare benefits, excellent workers' rights, free trade, massive mass consumerism, volunteer military, combat equality, uh, mandated reporters, advanced training programs, segregated regiments, which is, huh. I don't, I'm not in the military, so I can't comment. Tough security, capital punishment, you bet we do. Equal rights, proportional representation, East Country education, moderate regulation, intellectual excellence. Modernized agriculture, sustained prosperity and economic wellness, modern industry, elite vanguard, stabilizing integrity. Huh. So we got the Capitol Hill. According to the Constitution of the U.S., it's paramount we get support in Congress through the two houses, the House of Representatives and Senate. Uh huh. The next election. The next election will come this uh, November. It's our job to see that our candidate gets elected for a term in the White House. As election is seen by many as a referendum on Trump and his populistic policies, and only time will tell whether or not the businessman can hold on to the free world or have a drift towards a new leader. Sporting Joe Biden. Opposition to connection. Oh, so we got right now. Oh, so this is high approval rating for Joe. And low approval rating for Joe. We are low approval for Joe. On the conclusion of the countdown day, so we need high approval then. Okay, interesting. Protest the government. But we don't have weekly change. It'd be nice. Humiliate the opposition. Political sabotage. Approval rating move towards low approval. Um... What's it for Joe? Engage media. Yeah, we want high. All right? No justice, no peace. Mass rights are in fact. Okay. Yeah, we'll get there. Stabilize. Can't do anything there, so. Um, there you go. 41, 40. See what happens. Oh, what do we got here? Yeah. Oh, an operative can be computed. Hannah Gano. Hi, Hannah Gano. How you doing? Working on that naval experience. COVID-19 virus. If you, wonder, if you wonder about these, I've read these before, for the most part. Um, you go right ahead. Unprecedented times. There you go. Yeah. 
because constitutional protections. America has some of the most flexible free speech laws in the world. I don't care about the end of the living war. Uh, allowing for nearly unlimited freedom of speech and expression, diverse political opinions can be expressed from all sides of the political spectrum. Proponents of the system cite its freedom, while detractors criticize it for allowing the rise of radicalism. Despite this, the 2000s have seen a massive curve of such civil liberties, and many Americans have started reflecting how much of a sheet of paper from the 1770s reflect the real political situation in 2020. Low illegal immigration. Illegal immigrants or immigration remains one of the most controversial socioeconomic issues of modern America, though much lower now than it was during the early 2000s to the 2010s. Tens of thousands of illegal immigrants still cross the border every year. Such a flow of illegal immigrants coming from the South have angered many elements of the culturally conservative, wondering why their taxpayer dollars are going to people who don't even pay taxes. On the further right, white supremacist ideals such as the Great Replacement Theory have started to gain traction. World Police If you ask a number of different people for their view on American military involvement in the Middle East, you're likely to get a number of different, strong opinions. Many Americans believe that the U.S. government should focus on domestic affairs and that what happens in the Middle East is none of our business. Others believe that in this modern era, America must have a global presence in order to protect its interests. Differences of opinion over American interventionism in foreign affairs are nothing new. They have been present since almost the founding of the U.S. itself. Second Amendment The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution reads, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Such language has created considerable debate regarding the American Amendment's intent and scope. On the one hand, some believe that the, Ameri the amendment's phrase, the right to the people to keep and bear arms, creates an individual constitutional right for the citizens of the United States. Under this individual right theory, the United States Constitution restricts legislative bodies from prohibiting firearm possession, or at the very least, the amendment rears prohibitory and restrictive regulation are presumptively unconstitutional. Now, on the other hand, some scholars point to the predatory language of well-regulated militia to argue that the framers intended only to restrict Congress from legislating away a state's right to self-defense. In recent years, this issue has gone more to the forefront of the political landscape than ever before, and on the up. Oh, look at that. And weekly change goes up by 0.4. Oh, wait. Far right militias form in Virginia. It's come to our attention that after the major Second Amendment right, Second major, blah, 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 major Second Amendment rally in Richmond, multiple far right militias sprung up in the wake of the nationwide protests. We've uncovered multiple smaller organizations that have been conducted training in the Appalachian Mountains. These militias may pose a threat to national security in the future. Observations must continue. Oh, don't you love the FBI? No, you don't. No one, no one should. Anyways, engage media. The media has a massive influence on American society. By using all the combined power, we can ensure that the guy in the White House doesn't get another term. America's first coronavirus case. Today, the CDC is reported uh, from a suburban Seattle hospital with concerning news. America has its first confirmed case of the novel coronavirus, also known as the Wuhan coronavirus or COVID-19. The patient, a 35-year-old American national who visited Wuhan last week, said he never recalled interacting with any visibly sick people while there or during the flight back, and his symptoms did not emerge until several days after returning to the U.S. Oh, great. The patient and his family have already been placed under quarantine, and efforts are being made to track down those he came in contact with since returning to the U.S. Since the coronavirus seems to be contagious without displaying symptoms, medical experts are worried that dozens of people may have been exposed without knowing it. Seems this is our problem now, too. Oh, crap. Extremely low COVID-19 cases. Replace the Trump economy with lockdown economy. Well, this is going to suck. I ain't going to touch this yet. Oh, American, oh, peace deal. Peace with Taliban nears finalization. For months, we've been closely following the negotiations between the Taliban and the Afghan government to reach a peace deal, or peace agreement. While the troops' numberings decreasing and public support dwindling after nearly two decades of war, we're relieved to announce that the U.S. Taliban deal has been just signed in Doha, finally ending our two decade long involvement in the region. Peace at last. Is anyone killing each other here? No? Okay. Oh, fighting Corona. Statewide coronavirus breakout. Coronavirus, or COVID-19, is destroying our nation. We must act swiftly and sharply to flatten the curve, the ever-growing curve, but we also balance out our measures. We could destroy the economy and people's faith in the administration. Weekly mask gain, 2,000. Week mask supply. Hmm. Oil prices skyrocket, of course. Oh, dear. Oil crisis hits America. Autumn Boffin Division expands, starting as an online group of racist teenagers and commentators and spreading to a much darker, grimmer, more militant group. The Autumn Boffin Division has grown greatly within the past six years. Starting out as 13 close friends shooting guns in the backyard, the group has exponentially expanded to hundreds of members and thousands of sympathizers due to recent racial tensions, according to the FBI. Much of the Adam Boffin Division's growth can be credited to James Mason, a neo-Nazi accelerationist famous for his underground hit book, C. After taking control of the group in 2017, it initiated a massive purge of glowies. Since then, Adam Boffin's been operating recruiting out in the open and spreading violence and hateful rhetoric across country. Yesterday, Adam Boffin announced on his website that they'll be disbanding effective immediately, with little explanation given. 
Many anti-fascist figures have celebrated seeing this a major victory. Well, many are skeptical, claiming that the Adenbaffen and its satellite groups are simply moving further underground and they're still a present threat. Trump says this means there's no more Nazis in America. What is this? Implement guidelines? Vaccine research time. Purchase masks. Mass, mass production. Oh. Research with impending coronavirus outbreaks. Okay. Oh, what is this? We're in outbreak in Mississippi. Oh. We need way more masks. What state do I like? You know what? Let's go to my home state of North Carolina. My birth state. Well, an oil crash apparently has just hit America. As if the economic situation could not get any worse, the collapse of Saudi Arabia has created an oil panic that has placed the last nail in the coffin of our anemic economy. While Saudi Arabian oil only constitute about 20% of our total imported oil in 2019, are the main source of cut production due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and a few, namely Russia and Mexico, have reacted to the Saudi civil war by raising prices exponentially. Domestic oil production is not at the current necessary level. It's offset nearly 40% of domestic oil consumption and provided by imports. Wall Street has been nothing short of pandemonium. Whatever tab at economic gains made after the initial lockdowns have been wiped out as mass closures once again hit Main Street, USA. A trucking industry previously in full operation as an essential service is now undergoing mass layoffs due to exploding gasoline prices. Food is rotting warehouses because no one can transport it. Grocery chains have announced that branches will be shut down nationwide unless the situation changes rapidly. Couple with the COVID-19 pandemic, new oil crisis decimated what remained of the U.S. economy. Investor optimism is an all-time low, with some polls showing even worse settlement than that at the height of the 29 crash. Food and medicine shortages, well, the likes of which America's never seen, have hit much of the Mountain West and Appalachia. Meanwhile, rationing has been instituted across the country in all but name. Given the scarcity of many basic staples, people have been forced to break pandemic curfews, to go out and search for supplies, aggravating the spread of the virus. What have we done to deserve this? High expectations. Meet in the middle. Hmm. Who are running is trying to 10%. What is high expectations? Well, we're going to gauge media regardless. National. Nationwide lockdowns. We'll make GPO, GOP an offer they can't refuse. Me in the middle. Sometimes it's better compromise, even with our enemies for the greater good. I do like the approval rating. 10% uh, here. 20% on this side. Use political power. You know what? We'll go with high expectations, but then fuel the machine. Fuel the machine. Fortify the election. Oh, there you go. Fortify the election, of course. Uh, like a well oiled machine, our out media outlets will show that Trump and his supporters receive negative coverage 24 7 so that we can finally convince America it's time for the tyrant to go. Yeah, that's pretty normal. It's healing the nation, stabilize coronavirus recovery, economic Equ equity act. So, I'll be honest, last time I, I played as Germany originally. And it was a good, like, starter nation to play as. It's not bad. Um, but also, I didn't realize we had development down here. I, I, I don't like that I can't see, like, how to continue increasing all of this stuff here. Getting more development and whatnot. Is it society, like, development 2.1%? Is that monthly? I guess society development is 0.7. Well, I guess, like, you can see it, but it's... I'm just not used to it. I think that's the thing. Industrial development, monthly industrial development goes up by 1%. Uh, I ignored this last time. So now that I know, hopefully we'll do better. What are we missing here? Light mechanized. Oh god. Whee! Go to. Oh, uh, what else are we missing here? Motorized. Yay. I did most of this already set up off screen, but obviously not everything. Utility helicopter. What's next? Reconnaissance tank, yeah, I should have done that one too. Am I missing it? Motorized, reconnaissance. Yeah, it's over here. Light chassis. It's a recon tank. How about main battle tank? We definitely need at least main battle tanks. Let's see, I don't like that. I don't like having penalties. You're good. Um, 
recon tank. Is that the main armament? Flamethrowers. It's all normal tank stuff. How do you make it recon? Armor type. Engine type vehicle sights. Self propelled. Improved light tank. Gen 3 main battle tank. Special modules. Let's see something, nothing about recon. Um. Rotterized. Oh, recon tanks. Okay. So improved light tank chances. Those are the light tank. Okay. I did not know that was considered that. There we go. Okay. So let's see. I just don't know how this, some things are labeled in this mod. That many. Artillery's fine. Man pads are fine. There we go. Share the wealth. So our medium approval, it's not bad. Now it's going to lower us just a little bit. Versus the government. It's fine. Go ahead. Economy's cratering, that's all right. The Dow crashed 2,000 points. Holy crap. The Dow industrial average suffered its worst single day point drop ever. Smashed through record set earlier this month. As an oil price war rattled investors who have already been panicked over the coronavirus epidemic, the blue chip index. Near bear territory amid mounting fears about a global recession, plunging a record 2,000 points, almost 8%. The Nasdaq dropped 7.3%. The S&P 500 lost 7.5%. Wow. Worst day since 2008 in December. After diving 7% in the opening minutes of the trading session, triggering a New York Stock Exchange circular breaker that halted the trading for 15 minutes. Monday marked the first time the trading curb took effect since the current thresholds were implemented in 2013 to avoid a repeat of the 1987's Black Monday crash. The price of West Texas Intermediate Crude Oil tumbled more than 25% on Monday after rush over the weekend rejected a proposal from OPEC to cut back on global oil supply production by as much as 1.5 million barrels a day. Some industry experts also see the squeeze in the U.S. energy sector as an international ploy by Putin. Oh god, why is the red line going down? That just means time to buy. Unemployment hits 20%. In a shocking report by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the unemployment rate in the U.S. is at 20% for the first time since the Great Depression, leveling, or a level 6% higher than the peak of the Great Recession. The shocking report is that financial markets reeling with a projected unemployment landing around 18 million. While the coronavirus pandemic in full swing and the server sector losing critical jobs in a time where consumer spending has been incredibly low, a contraction in the economy is all but expected. However, combined with the oil crash just a mere two weeks ago, the trucking and transportation sector has undergone massive layoffs. One that had left millions of working Americans suddenly out of a job and stranded on the side of the street. The Trump administration has attempted to shift the blame onto the Democrats, with the blame being put on the COVID-19 lockdowns and the entanglement with foreign trade. While Democrats have blamed Trump's incompetency and over-reliance on oil for the cascading effect of the oil crisis, alongside the infighting among the American establishment, both the far right and far left have seen surges in membership, with Americans feeling hopeless, with government policy frozen among congressional bickering, and wishing for a radical change to solve radical problems. The Trump administration's greatest failure. Oh, do we have enough masks? What state do we like? Kansas? Do we like Vermont? Bern is that Bernie Sanders, ain't it? Alabama? Um, Colorado? Wyoming? Nebraska? Ne and the Navajo? New Mexico? Well, knowing where we're going to end up, let's go with... I want to go with Vermont. Now cases increased. The amount of COVID-19 cases throughout the nation has drastically increased. Uh, leading to an increase in quarantines and calls in six, which is slowing the economy down. The Trump virus strikes again. From riches to rags, he started. He stared, heart sunken and jaw dropping, at the sight of a number red, red number performed. The Dow Jones was down, as down the worst it had ever had been in, in history, down from 30,000 points on Friday to 15,000 today on Monday. It dropped by half. In the first few days of the Great Depression, it dropped by 25 percent. In this date history, it only took two days to drop by 50 percent. It was now potentially tens of millions in debt from a weekend. Bad, bad water trust company, but it was nothing new. It was now nothing. His life's work, gone in a weekend, from poor boy from New Haven to the living incarnate of the Wolf of Wall Street, back to nothingness again. He walked from his $88 million mansion overlooking the Hudson in his impeccably tailored suit, and drove his Lambo down the Henry Hudson Parkway to his towering office building smack dab in the center of lower Manhattan. 
didn't even bother to park properly, just walking in. Every employee he passed here had an amazement at actually seeing him, the boss. Each and every one would be out of a job within the week, from the janitor to the vice chairman of the board. He got into the elevator and used a special key car to allow himself to go to the roof level, where the ride up was the longest of his life. It wasn't long before he was on the roof now, overlooking the broad scheme of skyscrapers before him, the distance see farther into the background. The weather today was fittingly overcast and dreary. He stepped down to the edge of the rooftop, looked at the far flung ground and below. He said a prayer to God on the first time in several decades, hoping to get past the pearly gates for his mortal sin of seemingly impotent greed. He gathered his nerves and just at his time, and took the leap up into the icy blast. Happens. Oil. It's what everything was run on for decades. The containers. Uh, the world produced, the fuel for vehicles, the tarmac on the roads, everything leading back to crude oil. A single sign of a shortage was enough to send an economy spiraling out of control, but that is until 2020. Major catastrophes have been avoided. Now, however, in the face of the breakdown of the global system, society collapsed in the domestic situation, oil has been much harder to get a hold of. The global market has been deprived of its black oxygen, and now as a major utilizer of the fossil fuel, we feel the effects of this crisis most deeply. Dotes over our economic capacity is locked away, and our people suffer for it. Poverty rate skyrocket. A few weeks have passed since the start of the oil crisis, yet the economic situation in the U.S. looks increasingly bleak. Massive oil shortages have caused massive queues at every gas station and more businesses are going out of the market by the day, due to the decreased business confidence and lower incomes. While economists predicting that the U.S. might be heading into a depression similar to that of the oil crisis during the 70s, a massive sell-off of assets combined with the demand for gold skyrocketing to unprecedented highs reflect the fear that has struck at the heart of every American household. Reports show that due to the unemployment, decreased household incomes and inflation, the poverty rate in the U.S. is said to increase to 22 percent, numbers unseen since 1959. The political reaction was quite extreme of presidential candidate Joe Biden has denounced Trump once more for his unsustainable energy policies over the overlands on oil, while President Trump has blamed the Democrats for their opposition to supply-side policies, such as fracking and destroying the domestic energy industry. On the extremes, Patriot Friends have been thrust into the limelight once more as they draw massive crowds in a controversial march in Boston, clad in blue jackets, khakis, sunglasses, and tan hats. The provocative banners uh, blaming globalism have caused many disgruntled Republicans to join the ranks. Meanwhile, far-left organizations such as the Party for Socialism and Liberation have organized demonstrations echoing the popular sentiment expressed in Occupy Wall Street protests, blaming the greed of the capitalist system for the economy. Despite decades of entrenched anti-communist sentiment in the U.S., it seems that their membership numbers are skyrocketing as well. As extremism party grips the U.S., many fear that the worst is yet to come. So what's going <sighs> Lockdown economy. Oh. Okay. Oh. So what's the next thing we like? You know what? Alabama. Mm. Oh, what? over here? In Nevada. I thought it was over here in Nevada. Navajo. Nebraska. Wyoming. Honestly, I, it doesn't matter. Oh, you know what? I don't want to forget out of every state. Wait, Alaska doesn't exist, apparently. And Hawaii's already too late. Well. Mm. You know what? I want to do something weird. Let's go to the Colorado. Colorado. Get a few more masks, please, and purchase some more. Engage the media. Fuel the machine. Uh, let's have high expectations. COVID 19 is kicking everyone's butt. Gaddafi sees his power, secures power in uh, Libya. Nice beard, my guy. Nice beard. Ah, we got a couple more masks we can use now. Illinois, Tennessee, um, where would we want to go and do this? Purchase a couple more masks, that'd be nice. Let's go a little bit here and there. Idaho, Navajo, New Mexico. We're going to do it in South Carolina. Uh, can you yucky Sure. Uh... Implement guidelines. Sure. Add two days to mission statewide. Vaccine research time. That's quite a bit of book power. Oh, we could have done this too. Whoops. No, oh, I guess anything. No, oh, maybe not. We have the political power, but we're not stabilized yet. 
Radio detection's nice. So we're gonna that stuff. It's only 2020. It's May. Oh, uh, what else we got here? Synthetic refinery? Sure, why not? Well, can't buy any more masks now. Ohio? Sure. Freeport Complex Chemical Strike Plant for the COVID-19 pandemic in full swing. Workers in the Freeport Complex Chemical Plant have gotten up a strike to protest wage stagnation and amid high inflation and unsafe working conditions. Following decision to include the chemical plant workers and the definition of necessary workers, as many as nine workers have already died from COVID-related health problems prompting the strike. Security personnel from the Dow Chemical Company attempted to remove the strikers from the premises to little success following a two-hour standoff with the armed strikers and private security forces. The strike received nationwide attention due to the chemical plant being one of the largest produce production facilities in the Western Hemisphere, producing ethylene, propylene, polyeth polyethylene, um, propylene, propylene oxide. Following a failed negotiation 14 hours after the initial standoff, local union representative high on the tensions by publicly supporting and sharing rhetoric from the Center for Political Innovation, a far-left radical organization associated with the American Jacobin movement. This escalation allowed the Trump administration to label the group as radical communists and threaten the use of force to break the strike. Solidarity of the workers. And you know what? I guess we'll, you know, fuel the machine. And of course, the GOP rejects high expectations. And a surprising twist, the GOP has uh, decisively rejected a compromise budget bill. This bill, which was formed after intense bipartisan negotiations and heralded as a potential fiscal breakthrough, contained contentious provisions aimed at tackling entrenched economic issues. It appears that these controversial measures were the stumbling block that led to the bill's downfall. With tensions mounting and deadlines drawing near, our party's now in a frantic race to regain ground in the salvage situation. Hopes arrived, but reality wasn't. We have national lockdowns. The COVID-19 plague requires unprecedented measures to bring it to a swift end. National lockdowns may be decried as authoritarian, but we've got to do better, or got to do it for the greater good. And Freeport Complex strike broken. Following four days of four failed negotiations, the sit-in strike at the Freeport Complex chemical plant has been broken as security forces of Dow Chemical Company and dispersed the strike by force. The company, Dow Chemical, has announced that all workers who have participated in the strike were to be laid off for breaking company policy, as well as the hiring of over 300 new engineers and technicians to replace those who have been hired. At the end of the strike, public opinion is painfully split. The left blames the Democrats in action to prevent the government-sponsored crackdown and anger directed at the company for the violation of workers' rights. Meanwhile, the riders praised Trump for his fight against uh, communism and denounced the strike as anti-worker due to its allegiances to the CPI. Regardless, many worry that the new workers are not up to par with the old ones and will cause significant risks to production. Another example of Trumpist tyranny. Is it even worth doing this mask stuff here? Oh, we don't have enough political power for anything here, in all honesty, but it is what it is. We try to do what we try to do. Um, and of course, certainly fill the machine, but they have no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. All across the U.S., the forces of anti-fascism and social justice are mobilizing. Uh, it would be wise to ally with this powerful movement if we were to bring down the Trump administration. Uh, Richmond police kill unarmed black protesters. Yesterday evening, a 24-year-old black man named Quentin Evans died in police custody in Richard, Virginia. Evans was walking along the street when he was spotted by a police cruiser who believed he matched the profile of a wanted burglar. Although an identity check confirmed he was not the burglar, he was warned for failing to appear in the court of a drug position charge. He was detained by Sergeant James Harmon and put in the cruiser we suffered a brain hemorrhage and died en route to the police station. Cell phone footage from bystanders, however, revealed a different tale. While performing the arrest, Harmon forcibly pushed Evans' body, head and body against a brick wall, enough to nearly knock Evans unconscious. He was shoved against the wall again for saying he was in pain, and his cry, You're killing me, man, was met with laughing and dismissal by Harmon. <clears throat> the footage was posted on social media the next morning, resulting in outrage from the black community and local activists. Spontaneous protests have formed at the site of Evans' arrest, as well as outside Richmond PD precincts in City Hall. And so they bring change. Oh, we had raging riots. Nice. Hey, but we got high approval. It sounds like it might be more difficult to play as Trump than anything else. But we'll see. Federal police deployed to Richmond. Political clashes in Richmond have increased in the past few days. Anti Second Amendment protesters took to looting and setting fire to many businesses in the city. While local police attempted to keep the mass crowd of pro Second Amendment away, multiple brawls and active shootings were reported. Four casualties and 89 injuries have been confirmed by media outlets. Federal police of various departments were mobilized and tasked with arresting identified individuals who attempted to set fire to the town hall. Media backlash was quick to follow. Hundreds of pictures of federal officers in tactical gear arresting protesters off the street and dragging them to an unmarked vehicle and promptly driven off. Orders being eroded. And deal with the movement. The movement. It's a collective of political activist groups advocating for social change in the nation. Many of these groups are calling for police reform through means of peaceful protests, others through violent rioting, and some of the mix of the two. There are also those who use the social movement for their own advantage to end systematic racism through the means of looting and destruction, regardless. The movement's causing terrible instability needs to be dealt with, else the tides could turn against us. Protests being organized. 
if not completed. So we want them um, going for a good old uh, Sleepy Joe um, to continue to let this go. Fun, fund the movement. Oh, we can fund the movement. Oh, so if we fund the movement, it's going to hurt us. So if anything, we just let it happen. We just let it ride. We just kind of riding with Biden. That's what we're doing. Battleships, uh, basically armored cruisers, brought us in Oregon. Portland, known as a hotbed of extremism on the West Coast, has erupted into a violent protest as a movement sweeps across country. Following the killing of Quinn Evans at the hands of the Richmond PD, demonstrators have called for an end of police brutality, systematic racism, and inequality. They also demand justice for black Americans who have been victims of police violence. The protests in Portland drew national attention as tensions escalated between protesters and law enforcement. Federal agents were deployed to Portland to protect federal property, but the presence of only a few other protests. Protesters and federal agents engaged in violent clashes, with tear gas and rubber bullets being used by law enforcement. Despite efforts by law enforcement to disperse the protests, demonstrators in Portland remained steadfast in the cause. The protests continued through the summer and fall, with a number of high-profile incidents and arrests. The protests in Portland and other cities around the country brought attention to the urgent need for police reform and social justice in the U.S. Crush the system. Who needed political power? It's cocaine, huh? Stay here. Portland. Saturday King is dead. Eh, that's not good. At least for them. Oil crisis. 35, 34. Let extremism grow, my friends. Because you are about to explode. Oh, what do here? Nationwide protest. Spurred on by the news of Quentin Evans' death in police custody. And a police brutality protest has sprung up in Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, LA, Chicago, New York, Atlanta, Miami, Washington, D.C., and I'm sure even more. Attracting tens of thousands of people more every day, the demands range from civilian oversight boards for police departments and greater restitution for victims of brutality to abolishing the city police departments, all together in favor of community aid groups. Footage of Evans' death is spreading across social media like wildfire, along with hashtags like hashtag Black Lives Matter and hashtag You're Killing Us. The Richmond Police Department has announced that they have put Sergeant Harmon in protective custody and are opening criminal investigation in his actions, but there's no little to quell the outrage. It seems that these protests have morphed from reacting to one man's death and a general operating of grievances with police departments and the government. I only tell how long it takes for these people to dissipate. You hear the people sing? We're hearing things. Do we care for either one? No. Republic of Yemen. They're an oligarchy with an Arab League member. Versus these guys, widespread famine, and the Saudi airstrikes. Nationwide protests, there's that one. False flag incidents. We've uncovered certain groups of potential increase of the severity of the, any of the riots, including but not limited to leaving mass piles of bricks, which is true, bottles, rocks, and other objects with protests then threw at officers. These objects are conveniently placed in areas where dozens of rioters gather. There have been many claims on social media that these piles of objects were pass, placed by masked individuals. Our findings online may suggest that these objects are not merely misplaced. Interesting. Mostly mostly peaceful but fiery protests. It's okay. Fiery but mostly peaceful. It's okay. Patriot front clashes with the, with the resistance. Protests by rival far right and far left wing groups in Richmond descended into violence. As opposing sides engaged in clashes, and as one man was arrested for firing a gun at demonstrators. Nobody was hurt in an exchange of gunfire, and by Sunday evening there was nowhere on any injuries and numerous other skirmishes that saw opposing sides brawling, dousing each other in what appeared to be bear spray and breaking car windows of rivals. The country's descends further into anarchy. A nationwide rioting. In the wake of the death of an African American individual, a civilian named Quentin Evans, in police custody, hundreds of thousands of people have gone out into the streets in protest of a show of force not seen since the LA riots decades ago. The specific circumstances regarding the man's death are still somewhat vague as the trial regarding the incident has not yet come to pass, however. Footage of a yet unnamed officer holding his knee upon Quentin's neck while he states that he can't breathe have stirred the emotions of millions, causing liberal and left protest groups alongside uncoordinated members of the African American community to take part in these nationwide protests. Already, we have reports of escalation in Quentin's home in the city of Minneapolis, where looting of businesses, big and small, have occurred in areas where the police department has lost control of the sheer weight of numbers involved in the protests. Political activists on the center and left decry what seemed to be another run-of-the-mill police brutality incident of what they seem to be a far larger crisis that requires drastic social action to be resolved. Arlen agitators have equated the current situation to that of a drawn curtain Jim Crow, with legal agents being able to escape prosecution and exercise extrajudicial authority while handling minority suspects. Conservative elements have called for a drastic de-escalation, saying that in regards to the involvement, incident involving Mr. Evans, that Mr. Evans' detailed legal history displays a precedence for violence against officers, this being what the suspect officer used to justify the brute force prior to the death of Quinn Evans. Conservative elements have already begun to arm themselves in inner cities, protested in a number, or pro, uh, no, in, under a pretext of protecting small businesses, which they have said is being targeted by the protesters. Clashes are inevitable. No justice, no peace. We're here for a good time. Uh, we have options here. Oh, uh, oh, the outbreaks. Okay, we still have outbreaks. Oh, Nevada, maybe. It's a battleground state, so we've got to have Nevada. Florida. 
You know what? That's not a half bad idea. Illinois, Tennessee. Oh, would you look at that? Illinois. Well, let's see. Most effects of stability. Strong in three states. Ohio. We did. We're doing all the cheapest places first. New Mexico. We did Wyoming. Uh, it's Kansas. Would you look at that? Idaho? Mm, mm, Montana. We know what? what wait, wait a couple more days. Exception of the Capitol Hill as autonomous owner. Forgot about that one. Officers of the Capitol Hill in Seattle, Washington, have abandoned the precinct and relocated to a nearby Safeway. Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and other groups have set up roadblocks in the area and proclaimed the Capitol Hill autonomous zone. Autonomy for those oppressed. Well. Good luck with that. You're a battleground state. You need this. Let's take a look. See, I forgot about this group. Uh, Capital Autonomous Zone led by Raz Simone, Democratic Socialist or, or Libertarian Socialist. COVID 19 cases increase. It happens. Um, well, no justice, no peace. That's right. Under 5%. Oh my god. Wait, 100. Oh, 10.5. I thought it was 105. I'm like, holy cow. Prolonged impeachment. Political sabotage. Opposition taking action. One and a half is not bad. I'm not worried about that. What else can we do here? Indiana, Illinois. Oh, we can purchase masks. Minor lockdown. Blue ring will go down. Massive lockdown. Mass lockdowns. 28 days, 14 days. Oh, there goes Virginia. Richmond police disband. In a close 53 to 47 vote, Cedar Richmond referendum to disband the police department was nearly passed. Following the murder of Quinn Evans and the subsequent resistance riots across the country, a controversial call to disband the department has been risen among the residents of the city. Citing overwhelming corruption within the department, voters have instead opted to replace the police with a new department of public safety that would have likely included law enforcement, 9 11 responders, and mental health professionals, taking a holistic approach to crime. While supporters stated that the abolition of the department will shift vital resources away from the violent uh, policing and towards attacking the roots of crime, such as poverty and mental health, Opponents have echoed concerns that crime, violent crime will increase, especially given the dire state of the nation with the coronavirus pandemic. Despite the dissolution of the department, violent protests still rock the nation in the aftermath of the Quentin Evans murder. While it was too early to see the full results of the Richmond experiment, the United States has undoubtedly changed for better or worse. One step in the right direction. You can use some political power, I'm not going to lie. Mass lockdowns. The movement organizes White House siege. There are disturbing reports from the FBI and multiple informants on the surface today, the movement, and its splendid groups are actively organizing for a potential siege of the White House. This is all make its own sides with the approaching election season, with the movement aiming to prevent President Donald J. Trump's re-election as their top priority. But now strategizing a siege of the White House scheduled in approximately 50 days, intending to diminish the President's approval ratings. If not effective to count the movement's plans, the siege is likely to proceed a schedule, straining the President's current political efforts to fight the system. Fund the movement. Protests being organized. Siege being organized. The movement is organizing what they call the siege in the White House, which, if they succeed in launching, causes great hurdles to our administration, making it a lot harder to manage. The other option. <clears throat> to most of political observers, 2020 has been a year marked by extreme political violence and extremism. Started by the COVID 19 pandemic, the effects of the Saudi oil crash on the American economy and the resistance movement at far left par parties, such as the Party for Socialism, Liberation, have seen exponential growth. Across the political spectrum, a fascist group known for its striking propaganda and use of American themes in its advertising has also seen itself thrust into the limelight. Originally started by Thomas Rousseau after falling out with the white supremacist party Vanguard America, the Patriot Front has seen its branches pop up across the country. While the culturally left values of the left turn away many rural conservatives, the Patriot Front blames the common struggles of many Americans on immigration, cultural replacement, and liberal values. Because of the classical fascist and ultra-nationalist values, the Patriot Front face intense scrutiny and infiltration from federal security agencies, commonly known in extremist circles as Glowies, with many such agents attempting to use honeypot operations in order to hinder the operation capacities and growth of the party. Despite their best efforts, the Patriot Front continues to pose a significant threat to the fundamental values of American representative democracy. It can happen here, right? Increase in nationwide strikes. Strikes have shook every sector of the U.S. economy this year, from nursing to teaching to industrial labor. Reports from the National Bureau of Labor Statistics that have shown strikes in 2020 have nearly tripled compared to 2019, a phenomenon that has been attributed to the harsh working conditions that many essential workers have had to endure during due to labor shortages. For example, nearly 7,000 nurses have gone on strike nationwide to protest long hours with little pay. 
strikes among teaching assistants have shook educational institutions such as the New York, the New School in New York, and University of California systems, demanding higher wages due to the high price of living. Nonetheless, the massive uptick in nationwide strikes has indicated an anger among the American people, with the status quo and the falling standard of living. Rough times ahead. But what's next? 12% nice. Then what? Mingle with the movement. Double the movement's future support. Just four days. Mass riot, massive riots with alliance with the movement. Abandon the anarchists. The anarchists are an embarrassment to our movement. They are giving the right-wing media a few days and are humiliating us with new small businesses they burn down. They start to cut ties with these extremists. I think it would be more fun to mingle with the movement. If we expect to any support from the BLM and anti-fascist movements, we must get out on the streets and mingle with the protesters. Otherwise, we are looking like elitists who have no connection or sympathy with our movement. And all we want is their uh, support. NS NSM recruits among prison gangs. An infamous neo-Nazi group, the National Socialist Movement, has surprisingly seen an uptick in membership following the increasingly unstable political environment. Known for the public rallies and protests dressed in Nazi-style uniforms, their membership was previously fallen to around one to two dozen core members. Despite this, the National Socialist Movement has seemed to be making moves to collaborate with white national prison gangs across the country, with leaders Bert Colucci seen making visits to several high-profile gang leaders. While the group remains relatively fringe, it is a sure sign that the American political system is getting more extreme by the day, like a bunch of LARPers. Or we'll double the movement's future support. Yeah, why not? We'll mingle with them. Black Lives Matter, no justice, no peace. Does that say me too? Maybe not. I don't know. The Jewish Defense League. After mass surge and anti-Semitic attacks, particularly in New York City, and the greater New York metropolitan area, the Jewish Defense League has once again become an act of forming Jewish self-defense militias throughout Jewish communities in New York. The JDL militias seem to be uh, <clears throat> especially concentrated in the areas of Kiras Jol, despite the town being run by the anti-Zionist Satmar Hasidic group. The JDL, however, has organized militias among atheists and liberal Jews in the region, showing that the Jewish community in southern New York is becoming more and more united. <clears throat> Many in southern New York region have taken a protest against the JDL's actions, with many complaining that they are arming and training violent religious extremists, and asserting that the JDL is preparing to commit attacks against Arabs as they did in the past. Only time can tell what the JDL's next actions will be. It's starting to become a common occurrence. Trouble on Capitol Hill, but we always have trouble. What's this one? Flames of the future. Mass rights with waning rights, okay. Uh, as America burns, we see the flames of the future, a future purified from the sins of the past. We'll see about that. You can purchase more masks, more mask production. We can do some mass lockdowns. But I don't want to hurt our approval rating. We're at 18%. We're pretty doing pretty well. So I don't want to hurt that. <clears throat> Fund the movement. Yeah, I don't want to hurt approval rating, so take back Capitol Hill. Just go and take back Capitol Hill. That's fine. Um, get more masks. Travel on Capitol Hill. After several weeks of lawlessness and a standoffish behavior with the autonomous zone of Capitol Hill, in Seattle, it appears that this haphazardly experiment in self-governance uh, is nearing its expected end. Community leaders, radical organizers, and other Seattle locals attempting to maintain order and civility have mostly been met with a lack of cooperation, both in terms of political demands and for much of the population within the zone itself. Near depleted food supplies, a lack of organization, and an increase in criminal activity within the area has led to the situation becoming untenable for the organizers, with authorities slowly moving in and diminishing the size of the area in recent days as violent incidents have begun to occur more and more frequently. The most recent string of shootings, two of them fatal, has marked the beginning of the end of the zone's authority. Members of the Seattle Police Department, in tandem with the or orders of the mayor and with the assistance of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, are preparing to move into the area and put an end to the short-lived autonomy and restore our order, where whether those inside plan go willingly or not. Well, Illinois, I think you need a couple masks, don't you? Construction one. Nice. Resource efficiency game. Got a lot of naval stuff here. Uh, it's a little ahead of time there. We're not using, I don't think we're using rocket support technology. We can't do this one. Thermal optics, long time contractor. Here, Palmetto. Smith & Wesson. Doesn't really matter. Also, we were trying to build stuff, but obviously we couldn't. Oh. California wildfires. A Southern California couple, whose gender reveal party allegedly sparked the deadly El Dorado wildfire in 2020, has been charged with 30 crimes, good, including involuntary manslaughter, authorities announced Tuesday. A smoke bomb set up by the couple in Yakaipa, California on September 5th as part of a gender reveal sparked a fire that went on to burn more than 22,000 acres across two country, counties, San Bernardino County District Attorney Jason Anderson said during a news conference. One firefighter was killed while battling the flames and two others were injured, according to Anderson. The fire destroyed several homes and burned more than 20,000 acres, his office said. 
Cal Fire determined the cause of the fire was a smoke generating pyrotechnic device. This is why we have abortions. Oh my god, really? That's funny. I want more masks for now. Belarus, it's alright. Major protests, ah. Ah! Arabian, Saudi Arabian Civil War, very nice. Alright, so which side do we like? We don't care. Hezbollah, probably not. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, probably wouldn't help you out then. Seven divisions can be sent. And we can finally start using our guys here. Now, these are infantry guys. self propelled artillery, recon tanks, light tanks, basically. Um, we have special forces here, which I don't want to use. You have more special forces. You guys are tanky guys. You're the actual armor that we have here. A little bit of self propelled it looks like. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, you do have some main battle tanks. What do you guys? 25 combat width. APCs, recon tanks. Your infantry fighting vehicles. I don't like that. <sighs> okay. Uh, we'll keep you in. Nah. Uh, what is your speed? The garbage. Five. Six. You set up to seven. Troy Black. Good. You can send four. Take care of it. I already deployed these earlier. What do we have? Tech helicopters. Four things to cast would sound like fun. Let's send two of you to do this. And just in case, we're going to send 200 planes of fighters. Explosion of the Freeport Chemical Plant. An explosion, a chemical explosion, has occurred in the Freeport Chemical Plant today. As sounds as a pound of toxic chemicals were swept up into the air in what some have dubbed the American Chernobyl. With no rare projecting or affected areas as wide as the state of Texas itself, holy crap, many have concerns over health risks related to many of the chemicals being incredibly carcinogenic. carcinogenic. It is unknown the amount of people that will be affected in the long term, but most estimates range in the tens of thousands. Local residents have shared disturbing pictures of dead crows filling the street and livestock lying dead in their fields. Despite these shocking pictures, authorities have assured locals they will safely return to a mere 76 hours after the incident. With the smoke of the explosion being visible from even commercial airliners, radical environmentalists have used the situation of a protest to lackluster environmental regulations applied to companies such as Dow Chemical. Criticism that has received widespread support throughout the U.S., but particularly in the Northeast, with a handful of reports of a pseudo guerrilla warfare between the environmental extremists and local police forces. Meanwhile, the Trump administration has tried, tried its best to distance itself from the accident, releasing statements condemning Dow Chemical and the Texas state government for the mishandling of the situation, and promised to send in National Guard troops to help with the cleanup efforts. Pray for Texas. That's not good. So, uh, you need experience, which is great. I send the planes here too, just in case they had uh, help in the sky and whatnot. But as long as you have air superiority, that's really all that matters. Biden secures a Democratic nomination, which you pretty much figured. After Harpaw primary, uh, Joseph R. Biden has officially secured the almost 2,000 delegates needed and would fight to win back the soul of the nation. Mr. Biden, who served as Barack Obama's vice president, began the primary campaign in faltering style in Iowa, New Hampshire, but then came back with a convincing victory in South Carolina. Super Tuesday was more contentious, as many states swing in the favor of the progressive candidate Bernie Sanders. Mr. Biden said it's an honor to compete alongside one of the most talented groups of candidates the Democratic Party has ever fielded, and I'm proud to say that we're going to this general election United Party. Rumors of voter suppression as well as black girl corruption circles victory, but the Biden campaign denied these rumors much of the displeasure of the Sanders campaign. Congrats, Mr. Biden. Biden, huh? Not who I would have chosen. Well, I'll go with that one for now, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Ku and Molly? Don't care. They have no oil there that we care about, do they? I'm gonna get involved. There you go. Yay, I say something and it happens. Oh, I hate old guard. I don't want any old guard. Todd Waters? Why do you have one D in your name? Todd. Very strange, Todd. So I'm thinking here. What if we start here? We're gonna start here. And we'll do whatever we can to rip them up to shreds. You're gonna be aggressive. And you are gonna be not doing any of that stuff there. There you go. Shinzo Abe resigns. Eris ended. Cool. Oh, look at that. Very nice. There you go. I'm not super worried about this war. Good. Fund the movement. 
No, we're okay for now. Rise in African identity. With the resistance of full swing. I guess police brutality rocking the nation. A few new radical ideologies once again grip the nation. Uh, especially the African American population, especially in the Deep South. Faced with violence, suppression, protests, such as groups as the NFAC, New Black Panther Party, the African People's Socialist Party, and the Nation of Islam, that formed a unified paramilitary named the Black Liberation Army, named after the Black Power Organization that existed in the 70s and 80s. Despite their ideological diversity, the shared value in Black nationalism and unprecedented instability have allowed the organization to operate with surprising efficiency. An unprecedented display of unity, newly formed BLA paramilitaries marched down the streets of Jackson, Mississippi, chanting slogans of Black nationalism and separatism. Drawing inspiration from figures such as Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey, the BLA has seen unprecedented growth membership, with African Americans being increasingly disillusioned with the ability for the U.S. to guarantee their rights and safety. The BLA is immensely popular among the youth. Newly joined BLA members receive extensive paramilitary training in basic firearms practice and protest tactics, in which afterwards they are organized into a section of a local chapter. Over the past few months, ter- reports of terrorism done by the BLA has reached unthought of heights. The BLA has carried out a series of bombings, shootouts, robberies, and prison breaks, all which are severely worse intentions than the already fragile South. Clashes with members of the neo-Confederate paramilitary group League of the South, it seems, like the clouds of ethnic conflict are brewing within the South. The, re- the revolution will not be televised. Well, it is what it is. We help get rid of these guys first. Suburban radicalism. Midway have arised from the movement uh, protests in nearby cities, uh, such as New York and Boston, has led, led, led many in the Northeast, or Northwest really, to turn for the Patriot Front for protection. In particular, amid reports of looting and arson, small business owners have turned to the Patriot Front for assistance in protecting their shops, leading to clashes between movement protesters and Patriotic Front members in suburbia. Despite the long-running liberal and democratic nature of the Northeast, it seems that these riots have radicalized many to the far right. A worrying trend as violence descends upon the entire country. Extremism in the heart of the nation. Depends what you call the heart of the nation. You're welcome. Oh, Indy's over there. Look at that. So we did that part very, very well. We got rid of the Hezbollahers. I'm thinking. What if we just race through all the south? Eh, south. Eh, mm-hmm. The Arabian Republic. I don't like the Indians that are here, though. But we can probably take a lot of territory if we focus on the south here. Plane-wise, are we still... Oh, oh, we're not doing okay. Or do we ro- lose? Ah, we lost the airbase. That is why. So now that is really concerning. If that's the case, we are going to come to the center and reclaim that airbase. Because without that airbase, this guy's going to kind of suck. Wildfires continue to ravage. Uh, West Coast has death toll sores. Salem, Oregon. Wildfire smoke that posed a health hazard to millions choked the West Coast on Saturday as firefighters battled deadly blazes that obliterated some towns and displaced tens of thousands of people. The latest in a series of calamities this year. For people already enduring the coronavirus pandemic, the resulting economic foul and political tensions evident in the resistance protests and far right counter protests, the fires added a new layer of misery. What's next? You had the protests, coronavirus pandemic, now the wildfires. What else can go wrong? Lamented Danielle Oliver, 40, of Happy Valley, southeast of Portland. The death toll from the fires in California, Oregon, and Washington stood at 31 and was expected to rise sharply. Most of the fatalities were in California and Oregon. A half million Oregonians were under evacuation warnings or orders to leave. With their contamination levels at historic highs, people suffered under towels. To suffer towers, t- towels under door jams to keep smoke out. Some people wore N95 masks in their own homes. Some communities resembled the bombed out cities of Europe after World War II, with buildings reduced to charred rubble. Piled atop blackened earth. Residents either managed to flee as the flames closed in or perished. California, more like hell. Well, it's California, what do you expect? Ah, China. Oh, oh, okay, so we were losing their initial. I'm like, oh my god, how strong are the Turkish and real uh, Arabian coalition divisions? But Confederate sympathies skyrocket. When the tense rise and instability shaking the black belt, an intense reaction has emerged from ever more radicalized conservatives within the South. If one drives through Dixie, the sight of Confederate flags is not a rare sight. Despite the loss in the Civil War over 100 years ago, much of the Southern spirit stays alive today. Over the 38% of Southerners view themselves as having a Southern identity rather than an American one. And in a time in which the power and competence of the federal government is also being increased in the question, the percentage is projected to almost double. The emergence of black nationalist paramilitaries participating in the resistance protests has led the League of the South to be thrust into the limelight as a counterbalance for every black liberation rally. There is a League rally nearby, with support based concentrated in Arkansas, several local politicians and even pledge your loyalty to the group, with a deep conviction to restore the Southern identity and preserve traditional Southern values. Many moderates have called them extremists, yet despite that label, their membership has only continued to rise. 
Over the last few months, the LOS has concentrated the forces in Arkansas. The leader Michael Hill given several fiery speeches of denouncing the federal government and its Yankee imperialist policies. Thousands of young Southerners have joined its ranks, with many suspecting that if the U.S. were to break down, the organization would have enough institutional support to control the entire state of Arkansas. Despite calls from the coastal liberals for a federal crackdown on the hate group, the polarized and paralyzed FBI and NSA can do little but watch as extremism engulfs another part of the nation. Except these white supremacist hicks. It is a pretty flag, isn't it? Without the flag of St. Andrew. Where did my planes go? I can send two now. Well, then you hold. You are going to come here then. Death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg died on Friday at 87 years old. Her death was caused by complications of metastatic pancreatic cancer, and she passed it home surrounded by her family. The second woman ever appointed to the Supreme Court in 1993, Ginsburg fought tirelessly against sex discrimination and for women's rights. She made her stance on abortion clear. Uh, from day one, encoring them during a confirmation hearing, it is essential to women's equality that with man that she be the decision maker, that her choice be controlling, Ginsburg said. She was tenacious, strong, and determined, and she was a mother. She's even remembered by her two children, Jane Carol Ginsburg and James Stephen Ginsburg, as well as her four grandchildren, two step grandchildren, and one great grandchild. Her family, her country, and colleagues in the Supreme Court will never forget her. Our nation has lost a justice of historic stature, Chief Justice John Roberts said Friday. With the Supreme Court lost a cherished colleague. Today we mourn but with confidence that future generations will remember Ruth Bader Ginsburg as we know her, a tireless and resolute champion of justice. Even before death, the subject of uh, whether her seat on the Supreme Court should be filled remained vague until after the upcoming election was hotly debated in Washington and across the nation. She was amazing, but why'd she die at the worst possible time? I completely forgot about her, I'm not going to lie. Um, so, there's this one, which we read about earlier. So there's this, that will do green economics. Well, that wouldn't be too bad. If climate change is upon us and make COVID-19 look like a big old nothing in comparison. The oil crisis proves once for all that it's time to invest in alternative energy sources. But well, end up there. We're doing well. Uh, we're struggling in uh, Saudi Arabia, but who isn't struggling in Saudi Arabia nowadays? And uh, yeah, we're going to keep on going, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a fat old like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow as we continue on uh, leading everyone towards the path uh, towards Joe Biden, I guess. Thanks for watching, and have a great Joe Biden rest of your day.